Personalized products have absolutely been blowing up lately, and I think they're going to continue to grow on an upward trend throughout 2021. So in today's full length tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can use the product personalizer Shopify app to go and create beautiful personalized products that you can start selling on your Shopify print on demand stores. So let's take a look at the products that we will be building in today's tutorial with the product personalizer Shopify app. So the first one here is just this custom wedding sign. So as you can see, people can go and add their name and date to it. So we just go and hit personalize over here. As you can see, they can go and add their names. So if I just go and add my name in over here, and as you can see, it gives you a live update. So I'll be showing you how you can go and add fonts, how you can go and change the colors, how you can go and make the text curved and all of those types of things. And then they can go and add their dates as well over here so they can go and add any date they want so if we just go for let's say this date over here you can see that it updates live once again and then if they go and hit add to cart over here then we will see that they can just go and add the product to the cart so let's just go and hide this and what it does it actually generates their design as a png so they can go and download that image to go and remember what their product is actually going to look like so that's the first product that i'm going to show you how to build using the product personalizer app and then the second one over here is a little more in depth so it's basically essentially the same concept but when they go to hit personalize they can go and choose the name they can go and choose the date so let's just go and choose some names over here and once they choose their name they can go and choose the date again so they can go and say any date they want and then what they can do with this one is they can go and change the image so you can see over here we have a few different images that they can go and choose from just like this once again they can just go and hit add to cart so this is the power of using the product personalizer shopify app and this is really amazing if you have a print on demand store and you want to go and offer these types of products so the first thing that you are going to do is we're going to head back to our shopify dashboard over here and the first thing that you're going to want to do is go and install the product personalizer shopify app so if we just go to visit shopify app store over here and then from here if we just go and type in product personalizer and we hit enter and you can go and see that it's this one over here so it's like a purple sort of icon so if we just go and click on this i just want to go and show you so if we just go and scroll down you can see we have a few different plans over here so if you want to you can just start off with the 9.99 per month plan which is very reasonably priced if you want to go and get started with these types of products and then if you want to go and add more products it goes all the way up to a 29.99 per month so if you just click the link in the description you will find the product personalizer then all you need to do is just go and hit add app so once you have added the app you will see that you've got the product personalizer app over here now the first thing that you're going to want to do of course is import some products perhaps from a print on demand provider so you can see i'm using this new over here and there a really good provider because they have lots of different unique products so you can see that's where i got this custom wedding sign from so if you just go and have a look at some of their products so if we just go to all categories over here and you can go and see that they have loads and loads of different products that you could go and potentially import that then you could go and add personalization to so like I said, think about what type of product you want to import. It doesn't have to be from this new, it could be from any other print on demand provider. But like I said, I'm just using them for this example. So I've gone and imported some products. So if we just go over to products over here, you will see that you've got your imported products from, like I said, whoever you're deciding to use as your print on demand provider. But I'm just gonna go and add a product from scratch so we can go and start from scratch. So if we just go and click add product over here, I'm just gonna go and very quickly add in a mock-up product so that we can go and create one of these product personalizer products from scratch. So I've just gone and created one of these wedding sign products again from scratch. So we can go and look at how to add personalization to this product from scratch. Now, the first thing that you are going to want to do is you are going to want to go and create your design in Canva or in Photoshop and then upload the mock-ups of the product. So you can see over here, I've got the mock-ups already. So if we just go and open this up, you can see we've got some really nice mock-ups of how it's actually going to look. So I've just gone and created this in Photoshop like this. 
And then all I've done after that is I've gone over to this new and I've just gone and hit design. And then once you actually go and design the product, it creates the mockups like this with the design. So if I just go and hit design over here, just to show you what I mean. And like I said, you can do this with any print on demand provider. So let me just go and log in here. So now that I'm logged in, I can go and create the design. So we just go to design over here. I'm just gonna go and hit image and I'm just gonna go and upload that image that I created. So it should be in here. So it's this one over here. So this is sort of the final design that I want people to be able to create with the product personalized app. So let's just wait for this to upload. So basically once I finish this design, then this new will generate the mockups that I can go and download. So I've gone and downloaded the mockups. So if we come back over here now, I can go and upload those mockups as you can see, like I've already done here. So we just go to add media. We can go back in here and we can see I've downloaded these mockups and I've just added them. And the reason you want to do that is because you want to go and show what the final product is going to look like. So firstly, go and make sure that you add your mockups to your actual product, whether you've imported it from Printful or from Printify or from this new, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you've got your mockups in there. So now we're just gonna go and hit save over here. So we've created the product. And like I said, if you import the product directly from a print on demand provider like this new or Printful or Printify, generally all of this will be created for you anyway. So now that we've done that, we can go over to apps and now we can go to product personalizer. So go to your product personalizer app over here and you will see the product that you've just created. So you can see this is the one that I've just created over here. So what we're going to want to do is go and hit configure over here. So once you hit configure, firstly, it's going to have the background area. So this is going to be where the actual personalization is going to take to take place. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go and create another version of your design, but without the areas that are going to be personalized. So for example, if this bit over here is not going to be personalized for the first product. So they're just going to be able to personalize the text and that's it. What I'm gonna do with this design is on Photoshop, I'm gonna go and turn off the text and I'm just gonna go and have this image over here. And then we're going to go and add the text in through the product personalizer app. So you're going to want to go and save this image like this. And this is going to be the background that we use in the product personalizer app. So if we go back over here under background, I'm gonna go and hit the plus button I'm gonna go and choose a file. And then from here, I'm gonna go and choose, if we just scroll down, I should be able to go and find this one over here, this wedding print without the text. So this is the one we used for the mock-ups because we want to show what it's what the final product is going to look like. But this is going to be the background that we use for the actual product personalizer app. So we're gonna go and hit open and we're gonna go and hit upload image under background. So now we've got our background, we can just go and close this. So you can see we've got our background over here. So over here, it's gonna show us the different fields that can be personalized in the product personalizer app. So over here, we've got field one. Now you can go and name your fields based on what they're actually going to be used for. So if we just go back over to the product over here and we go and hit personalize, we can see the first field is called names and the second field is called date. So if we come back over here, we're gonna go and call this first field. The label is gonna be name, or you could put names. It depends on obviously what it's going to be. So depending on what you want the customer to personalize, that's what you're going to name your label. Next up, we have the default value. So that is basically going to be the default text. So for this product, the default text is John and Jane. Now you can go and put whatever you want in here. So I'm just gonna go and say John and Jane again. So let's go and say John and Jane like this. So now you can see it gets a bit smaller. So what you're going to want to do is you want to just drag the box out. So if we just drag it out like this, and then you can actually go and change the font size if you want to. So I could go and make it a bit bigger. Once again, we can drag the box out more like this. So now our text is looking quite large. Now what you want to do next is actually go and change the font and the text color. So firstly, we'll just change the text color because that's the easiest part. So if we just scroll down, we can see we've got this blue color over here. So you can just go and paste in any hex code you want for the color that you like. So you can see I'm matching up the color of the actual design with the text as well. So you can go and do something simple like that. Now to go and change the font, you actually have to go and upload a font as a .ttf file. So you can actually just go and download fonts from different websites, for example, Envato Elements. So you can see over here, I've just gone and typed in wedding font 
and I think I've actually gone and downloaded this one over here, Merry Dream. And then once you actually go and download a font, you can go and upload it to the Product Personalizer app. So if we just come back over here, where it says default font, if you go and hit the plus button, and then you go to choose a file over here. And what I can do is, I believe it's in here. So let me just have a look, it should be in here. So you can see I've got this TTF Merry Dream font. So I can go and hit open, and then I can go and hit upload font. So it has to be a .ttf. So now I've gone and uploaded that font. We should see that in a moment, it is just going to go and change to that font. So if I just go and choose it again, Merry Dream. So now we can see that it's actually gone and uploaded that font. Now I'm just gonna go and make this a little bit smaller because you can see that this font isn't as big as the previous one we were using. So the box doesn't have to be as big. So now what we want to do is make sure that it's aligned in the center. So if we scroll down over here, you'll see the X and Y position. So I believe the X position is the one to make it down the center. So we can see if I put 50 in here, now it's aligning to the center of the design. Now next up, if you want to go and add some distortion to your text, you can see over here where we've got angle circular, you can go and change it. So if we go and change it to circular, and you can basically go and change the radius. So if we go and change this to minus 500, we can see that it sort of curves around like that, and that looks really cool. So now we've gone and added our first field, which is the names. So all you need to do then is just go and add another field. So if we go to add field, you can go and choose different fields. So you can go and choose loads of different things by using the Product Personalized app. So we've got text single line, we've got text area multi-line. So basically text single line is what we're using right now. So it's just a single line of text. If you want text multi-line, that basically means if you want to sort of perhaps write a letter or if it was gonna be a card. So if you were doing print on demand cards and you wanted people to be able to write within the card, then they can go and add a multi area where they can go and keep writing loads of text. You've got an image upload. So that is where the customer can actually upload an image of themselves or something like that. You've got an image swatch, which I will show you later on in the tutorial. So an image swatch is what we've got here. So where they go and choose different images. And then if we go back, we have a color swatch. So where they can go and choose different colors. So that could be perhaps the background color or something. We have an option list. So that's basically a drop down where they could choose from different options. And then finally we have a checkbox. Now for the actual personalization, I think the best ones are going to be these top ones over here and maybe color swatch as well, depending on what the product is that you are selling. So what we're gonna do next is we are just gonna go and add in another text single line. So if we just go and add in text single line over here and you can see it's called names too. So we're just gonna call this one date. And then what we'll do is we'll put a date in here. So we'll say 05, let's say 05, let's say 2021. They're getting married in May. And now you can see it's sort of curving upward still. So what we can do is instead of minus 500, we can change the arc radius to 500. And now you can see it will curve downwards. Now, if we just go and change this, let's say to 700, you can see that the curve, I believe the maximum, let's see if we change it to a thousand, I believe, no, so yeah, you can see the more you do, the sort of less curved it gets. So if we just put it as 50, you can see it's sort of a full circle. So you can go and have a play around with the arc radius and see what you like, but I think 500 looks pretty good. So now what we can go and do is, we can go and just drag this down to the bottom like this. So if we just drag it all the way to the bottom over here, and then we can change the X position to 50 again to make sure that it's aligned in the center. So now we can see that we've got those two areas over here. So basically, if we just go and save this now, the product will be ready to go. Now over here, you can go and change a few different things. So where it's got the personalized button text, if we come over here and we just get rid of this, you can see I've got personalize it over here, but you can go and change that to whatever you want. So you could go and say something like add lovers, let's say, so they can go and add the lovers names. So you can go and change it to whatever you want, but I think personalize it just sums it up pretty well, so it's pretty good. Now, over here, you can go and change how it actually pops up. So I think button with pop-up looks the best, but if we just go and let's test one of these out. So let's go for button with toggle. As a matter of fact, let's go for button with pop-up exclusive. So let's just go and save this now. And basically, if you click this over here, you can go and preview the product. So let's just go and open this up and go and have a look at what this one looks like. So if we just go and click on personalize it, you can see over here, this one's saying sold out. That's because 
in the actual product itself, I put that we had zero left. So that's t totally fine. So let's just go and have a look at what it looks like if we were to go and change this down here to button with a toggle. So let's just go and hit save. And let's go and have a look at what it looks like now. So basically, if they come over to the product, let's have a look. So you can see that it's got the toggle. So that's pretty cool. I like the pop-up, but if they go to personalize it and you can see they can go and do it like that. So if we just go and add the names again, you can go and see that once again, they can go and add whatever they want in there. So as a matter of fact, I think the toggle is pretty cool as well, but it's totally up to you. You can go and test out your store, see which one converts better. Does it work better with the pop-up or does it work better with the toggle? It's totally up to you. So that is the first product that we have created. So as you can see, we can go and add in our names. So names and names, whatever you want. So there's the names and you can go and add in the dates. So 05, 06, 1912, these are an old couple. So that's the first product. And then, like I said, as this is sold out, they can't actually add it to the cart. So what you'd want to do is make sure that if we just go, let's make sure this is saved. So let's just hit save on this. If we go back to the products, just make sure that your product over here, you can see I've got zero in stock. So if we just go and change this, so let's just go down to the stock over here and we can just go and say there's 50 available and let's just go and hit save. And now if we just go and preview that, so let's go and preview it now, we should be able to see that we can add it to the cart now. So let's get rid of this. So yes, like I said, if we go to personalize, now they can go and add it to the cart. So that's the first product. So the next one that we want to go and create is with the image swatch. So we're just gonna go and change, create another product. So let's just come back over here. And what we can do is we can just go and duplicate this product. So let's just go and hit duplicate. And we're just gonna go and call this one personalized swatch uh, image. Let's call this one. So I'm just gonna go and duplicate this product. Now for you, obviously, you can just go and import the product again from your print on demand provider. So like I said, if it's this new, you can just go and import the product again. And it's totally up to you how you want to go and sell your product. So some people just will go straight away and just sell it where the actual design can be personalized or if you just want to only be able to personalize the text, it's totally up to you. So I've just gone and created this duplicate over here. So what we're gonna go and do is we're just gonna go and create this as an active product. And now I'm gonna go and show you how you can go and add an image swatch. So if we go back to apps over here, we're gonna to go to the product personalizer again. And now we can see here's that product that I just added. So we can see I've got no images for it yet. So let's just go back to products over here. Let's just go and upload some images and we'll add some quantity as well. So let's just go and once again add 50. And we're just gonna go and add those mock-ups that we already have. So if we just come back over here, we can go and see one, two, three, four, five. So we just go and upload those mock-ups. So now those mock-ups have uploaded let's just go and hit save again so finally let's go back to apps again and we're going to go to the product personalizer app so now we can go and configure this product as well so let's go and hit configure over here now if you recall the background that we previously used was this image over here but now that the customer can go and choose the image themselves we don't actually have to go and upload this to the product personalized app we can just go and have a plain white background and we're going to go and upload the image that they can go and choose so firstly we can go and just add in our name field so let's go and add in the name we'll just go and add in the names again john and jane and then we can go and choose our font. So once you've actually uploaded your fonts, they will actually be saved in the app. So you can see I've got Merry Dream over here. And then I'm just gonna go and choose this color over here. So let's just go and copy this. And we're gonna go and once again, we can paste it in there. We can go and make this a bit bigger. And like I said, you can just go and drag to make this bigger. So let's just go and drag that out. And then we're gonna go and add in our arc so let's just go and make sure this is at the top like this and we're going to make the x position 50. so what you can do is you can make sure that your products are the same so if we just go and open up the product personalizer app again 
So what we can do is we'll go back to product personalizer and we'll go back to that first product that we created. And like I said, I just want to show you this to make sure that all of your products have consistency. So this first one where they can't pick the image, they can only go and change the names. We can go and make sure that the X and Y position of the text are still the same. So you can see this is 5.73 and 50. So we can make this the same 5.73 and 50 like that. So now we've gone and created that one. We can go and change this to a circular angle and we're going to do minus 500. So next up, what we want to do is we want to give them the ability to go and choose their image. So as a matter of fact, I'm just going to go and drag this up just because I don't think there's going to be a lot of space when they go to choose their image. So in order for people to choose their image, we're going to go and add a field again. And this one is going to be an image swatch. So over here, we can go and say choose print. So they can go and choose their image. So now what you can do is we're going to go and add a group of images that they can go and choose from. So image group over here, we're just going to go and hit plus. And now from here, we're going to go and choose some files. So over here, if I just go back, I've got all of these different images that they can go and choose from. Now, what you're going to want to do is make sure that these are PNG. So that basically just means that the background is completely transparent. So if we just go over to Photoshop, what I can do is if I scroll down, I can turn the background off and now we can see it's just the image on its own. So I've gone and done this for a few different images. So if I go and turn this one off, we've got this one. So I've just gone and saved all of these as an individual PNG file. So if we turn that one off, we've got this one. And the reason that we want to do that is because if you leave it with a white background, it basically will go and cover up the text that we've just added. So people won't actually be able to go and personalize the text because it will be behind a white background. So if we just go back over here, now we're going to go and upload our images. So I'm going to do one, two, so not this, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got those six wedding images and we're going to go and hit open. And we're going to go and hit upload image. So now we're just going to wait for those images to actually upload. So now we can see that they've all been uploaded. And what we're going to do is we're going to go and add these images. So we're going to go and add wedding one. Now you can go and name it whatever you want. So you could go and give each image an actual name. So if I wanted to, I could go and say they call this one two lovers and a heart. I could go and call this one uh, passionate lovers or something. I could go and call this one ha holding hands. So you can go and call it whatever you want in the actual app. So for example, we could go and say holding hands, or you can go and just do something simple and just say, let's say print one. So you're going to have print one, then going to add another image. And this is going to be the second one. And this can be print two. And now we're going to go and do that for all of our images. So let's go and add all of these images in here. So we've got print three and Let's scroll down, add print four, and we'll add another one, just up to six images. Now it's totally up to you how many images obviously you want to add for your personalized product, but I think six is fairly decent. Now, once you have finished adding all of your images and giving them a name, you can go and add price bumps to your images. So you could go and say, let's just say the first image is going to cost $5. The second image will cost $6, or you could just go and set all of them to the same price. So every, any image they add will cost them an extra $5. But what we're just going to do is we're just going to go and leave this one as five, this one as six. So we can go and have a look at how that looks on the front end and we'll leave these ones as zero. And then you're just going to want to go and give this a title as well. So we're just going to go and call this wedding prints. And basically that's just your group of images. So that's the title of your group of images. So once we have gone and done that, you can just go and hit create like this. So then it will just go and create that group. So now we can see we've got our image over here. It's looking pretty small. So we're just going to go and drag this out and make it as big as the entire canvas. So let's just go and make it like this and like this and like that. So you can see we've got our image over here now. So what we're going to do is we're going to line it up 50 and zero. So now it's right in the center. So maybe we're just gonna make it a little bit smaller because it's taking up a lot of space at the bottom. So let's just make it a little bit smaller, something like that. So once again, we can go and change the X and Y position to 50 and to zero. So then it's right in the center. So 
Now over here, you've got your default image. So that's gonna be the first image that they see when they go and open up the product personalizer app on the front end. So you can go and change this one to whatever you want. So I could go and change it to, let's just go and say this one over here. So we're just going to change it to that. And then basically what we can do is a matter of fact, let's go and see if there's just a nicer looking one. Let's go and change it to this. So now we've gone and done that. Now the reason that it's coming out sort of a little bit distorted like this if you notice that is because the actual image that i've created is fairly small so you're going to want to use a very big canvas over here within photoshop itself so i believe the one i'm using here if we go to new over here the one i'm using is 2000 by two and a half thousand so we could probably go and double that so 4000 by 5000 let's say so you're going to want to go and create use a, the biggest one that you can so that the image is don't need to be stretched out and get distorted like this. So now that we've gone and done that, what we can go and do is, we can just go and add a, another text area. So what you can actually do is, you can just go and duplicate text areas, or you can go and duplicate any of these fields you want. So if we just go and choose this, you can go and just hit this button over here, copy this field, and you can see it creates another one over here called names three. And then we can just go and drag it down a bit and then if we just go and change the arc radius to 500, and then we can just go and move this one to the bottom like this, and we can just go and change the X position to 50 to make sure that it's in the center, and then we can go and change the name. So instead of name three, we can go and say date, and then we can go and change where it says John Jane, we can go and change that to a date like this. So now that we've done that, once again, we could go and change it to a button with toggle, and we can go and hit save. And now if we just go and preview this product, so let's go and open this up. So we have the product over here, so we can see we've got our nice mockups of the product. Then if we go and hit personalize it over here, we can go and as we can see, it's looking really good. So we can go and say John and Jane, or well, let's go and choose some different names. Let's go and say Elliot and Nem. And then over here, we can go and choose our print. So you can see it allows you to choose the print. So looking really cool. And then finally, we can go and choose the date like that. So that is basically how you can go and create two different types of products. Now, if we just go back into the back end over here, I'm just gonna go and show you very briefly how you can go and add some of the other fields. So if we just go and hit add field, we can go and add an image upload. So if we just go and, as a matter of fact, let me just go and get rid of this one over here. So let's just go and delete this. And we're just gonna go and add in an image field. So it's called date four. But basically, we can just go and say upload image. We can have the default image as, we could go and have it as this, let's just say. So let's just go and drag this out. And let's just go and have a look. The date is still there. So we've got upload image. So let's just go and do it like this. Or you can go and have it as blank, as a matter of fact. So let's just have it as blank. So let's see if we can just go and just make it 50 and zero. So it aligns in the center. So this purple box should go once we actually go and show it in the front end. So if we just go and leave it like that, and what we can do is we can go and hit save. And now basically someone can go and upload their own image of themselves. So if we just go and let's just open this up and just make sure that that purple box has gone. So we can see over here, if we just go and hit personalize, so we can see, like I said, that purple box goes. And now what they can basically do is, if we just go and type in the name over here, and we go and add a date. Let's just go and say, let's go and change the date so we can see that it actually up dates. And then we can go and choose a file. So we go and hit choose file, and we can go and upload our own image. So let's just go and add one of these. Let's just say, for example, let's get rid of this. So now you can see that they can go and upload their own image, and they can go and sort of muck around with it. So you can see we can twist it around like this. We can go and hit a plus button, we can do a minus. So let's just delete this. Let's go and upload a different image. So if I go to choose file, I'm just gonna go and upload this image over here, let's just say, for example. And now we can see that it's probably a little too big, this image. 
to go and upload because it's basically taking up the whole canvas so you can see it's we need to go and find one that's a little bit smaller so let's just go for choose file again so let's just go maybe let's say for this one over here let's see how this one looks so once again it's still a little bit too big this image so if we just go and delete this we'll just go back to our normal wedding images over here so we can go and basically the customer can go and upload any image that they want to so if they were to go and upload this one let's just say for example and you can see we can make it a bit smaller we can move it around so if we just go and drag this out like this and we can go and sort of make it in the center so if we go and hit tick for this you can see that they've gone and designed their own one now by uploading their own image so there's loads of different things that you can go and do using the product personalizer app so finally like i said if we just go back over here and we just go and click on add field over here we can go and let's just say add an option list for example so we could just go and say choose style let's say for example and then you can go and create the option list over here so we could say you know we can go and say whatever we want option one oops let's go and make that a one we could say choose option and then you can go and add whatever you want so let's add another option and we call this one option two and we just go and hit create over here so this is going to be a drop down so you've got the placeholder text so this is what's going to actually show in the drop down so we could go and say choose option again and then if we just go and hit save we should be able to go and see if we just go and open this up that we've got that option list so if we go to personalize we can see over here they can go and choose option one option two now let's just go and have a look at the price bumps again because I think I did miss that from earlier so let's just go and make sure so if we just go to our options over here we could just go let's hit plus over here we could say option two option one so let's just swap those around and we'll make this one 10 and then if we just go and create this let's go and hit save so it should actually show us that the price goes up based on what option that they choose. So I did go and do this with the images earlier, but we didn't actually test it out. So if we just go and hit personalize over here, we should be able to go and see that if they choose option one, if they choose option two, it should go and change the price. So we can see over here, option one, yes. Yeah, so as you can see, it goes and adds it on. So you can see if they choose option two, it goes and adds the extra on. Then if they just go back to choose option, it doesn't add any. So option one was five, and option two was 10. So you can see that that works and that's a really great way to add upsells to these personalized products. So like I said, with the images earlier, you could go and add on $5 if they want to go and change an image or if they want to go and upload an image or things like that, then you can go and add on extra bits of pricing to go and bump up your average order value of these personalized products. Now, if any of you are wondering, I am using the Debutify theme. So the product personalizer app pretty much works really well with every single theme, but it looks really nice on the Debutify theme. So I'll leave a link in the description to the Debutify theme as well if you are interested in going and creating a store similar to this one. So that is basically it for this tutorial work, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial and you have taken some value out of how to go and create these really beautiful personalized products so you can go and start creating them and adding them to your own stores. And I think that these are really amazing products because when somebody can actually go and create their own product, it just goes and adds that extra value and it just entices them to want to purchase the product more because it is personalized to them. So if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more e-commerce content and I'll see you all in the next video.